You can All right, let's call on. this meeting to order. Roll call shows everyone here except the mayor of St. Cloud. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Yes, item number 10 will be given by Sonny Hess. Item 10. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, approval of the agenda. And I think we have Dave who just joined the Minneapolis 1 5. I don't, I don't know. Dave, are you on? Sorry about that. Um, I let somebody use my phone. I don't know how to change that that little thing on the. <laughs> and, and I'm on okay. time, Rick Foy. Not only are you quick, you are quicker than. <laughs> I'm quick done. because I got to leave in about five, six, seven or eight minutes. I got another meeting that's going on right now that I have to be at. Okay, well then, uh, let's um, let's uh, approval of the agenda. All right. <laughs> Sounds Move good. Approve. approve the agenda. All right. Back, back. Moved to send second. And Ryan, take the roll. Uh, Dave Pies? Aye. Rick Miller? Aye. John Libert? Aye. Brian Fitzum? Aye. Kurt Hunsniger? Aye. That uh, is approved unanimously. Uh, next item. Move to approve uh, consent agenda items five through eight. Moves there a second? Second, Hunsniger. Moved and seconded. Uh, Ryan, take the roll. Uh, Dave Pies? Aye. Rick Miller? Aye. John Libert? Aye. Ryan Fitzum? Aye. Kurt Hunsniger? Aye. All right. That passes unanimously. Any, uh, the next item, Ryan? Uh, open forum. Seeing none, we can move on to general business. Item nine, consideration of Metro Bus investment policy. Paula Masti. All right, Paula. Paula, you have yourself on mute. Yeah, she does. Hello. Yeah. All right, can you hear me? Start. Can yeah, we can hear you again. Okay, perfect. Sorry, phone and computer and everything thinking. Anyway, uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, before you is the uh, investment policy for Metrobus. We currently don't have an investment policy. We've got um, basically a few paragraphs in our internal control document. So this is long overdue. Um, just basically uh, doing some housekeeping and standard kind of um, credit uh, objectives and credit risk, that type of stuff, uh, investment. Um, security that it's just kind of your standard standard requirements for government uh, uh, investments. So again, um, just looking for approval on the on this policy. Is there a motion? Miller. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Hunsticker second. And then I had a question, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, discussion. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Kurt. Paul, I, I agree with what you said. This is a, a governmental. Uh, an account. So this is um, following Minnesota statutes 118A, correct? Yep, that's correct. Okay, that's all I had. Okay, any, perfect. Yep. Any further questions or discussion? All right. Um, hearing none, uh, Ryan, can you take the roll, please? Uh, Dave Fleiss? Aye. Rick Miller? Aye. John Libert? Aye. Ryan Fitzham? Aye. Kurt Hunstinger? Aye. All right, uh, that passes uh, unanimously. Ryan, the uh, next item. Uh, next item, COVID-19 update. It will be given by Sunny Hess. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, main part of the update today regarded, regarding COVID-19 is um, related to vaccinations. Um, public transportation employees were added to the eligibility list by the governor's office last week. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we've reached the priority level yet, but we are at least on the eligibility list. Um, because of that, we have had um, contact with Stearns County. Um, they have actually opened up, I believe, four different clinics to our employees to give them the opportunity to sign up for vaccinations. We had two clinics last week that were offered and two clinics this week. Um, when we get that information from Stearns County, we're communicating with all of our employees as soon as we can. It's typically pretty short notice. Um, last week, I think we found out on Monday or Tuesday for clinics on Wednesday and Friday. Um, and then we found out on Friday of last week for clinics this 
Thursday and Friday. Um, so as soon as we get that information, we're posting it and sharing it with our employees and giving them the opportunity to register themselves for vaccinations if they're interested. Um, we've also provided just a general um, communication to employees, letting them know that now that we are on the eligibility list or public transportation is on the eligibility list, they also have the opportunity to contact their local or provider pharmacy if they want to attempt to schedule something um, that way, um, if they're not able to make these uh, COVID clinics offered by Stearns County. Any questions? Just, just one note of concern is, is if we have a lot of people, please uh, kind of schedule them. Don't schedule them all in one day, because just in case they get a reaction to the shot, we don't need 15 or 20 people out, you know, if, you know what I'm saying? Yep, yeah, we've okay. talked about that internally. Yep. We're, we are actually not scheduling for our employees we are right. leaving that up to them to schedule based on their work schedules their personal schedules but we have had internal conversations about the potential for reactions and making sure we've got um you know enough staff to cover um routes and shifts okay. all right Sorry, is, is that all employees or just operators it's all public transportation employees Good. all right any other uh, any good other questions or anything further on the uh, COVID nineteen update? All right. Did I should ask uh, how many uh, on this call have had their vaccine? Me, I did. Okay, John, you got yours? Oh, I got up. Yep. All right, Rick. Okay. I got mine. This is Kurt. I got mine also. All right. Well. Uh, at some point, um, when it's available to everyone, we could probably start meeting again. Um, but um, I got mine too, at least this first shot. Yeah, good. So, um, well, sounds good. We'll maybe look in when it, I, I would think from a, just from a perspective of once anyone in Minnesota can get a shot, then it probably makes sense at that point for us to, to meet again um, in in that order but um any other anything else for the good of the uh group here ryan or members uh, we have one more uh item on the department update we have an operations update which will be given by dave green okay good afternoon commissioners uh so just wanted to provide a real brief uh update i'll try to be quick because i know rick has other commitments uh, from the operations department. So uh, March 22nd will mark the anniversary of our first reduction uh, due to COVID-19 last year. So since then, we've had about four, four cycles of change and our main focus has been adapt service to changing conditions protect, to protect the safety of our customers and our staff. Uh, certainly not an, an easy undertaking for staff uh, when, when we make significant changes like we have over the last uh, year. Uh, there's there's quite a bit of work that goes into it. So um, a shout out to them for all their hard work and uh, and uh, keeping up with that. So we continue to provide PPE to employees and customers. Um, our ridership trends uh, as compared to the rest of the nation are um, are higher. Uh, we're seeing a, a higher income increase as compared to the rest of the nation. Um, and our monthly ridership trends, uh, we continue to to work our way up. So we're looking good in that area, certainly not uh, where we would like to be, but uh, again, it is what it is. And 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 we're continuing to uh, to adapt and adjust and, and look at making changes to continue to, to have that increase. Uh, accidents, focusing on accidents and performance. Um, so our accident re reduction percentage was 36% uh, fiscal year 20 compared to 2019, which uh, obviously that's a that's a pretty pretty high number and a pretty good uh, um, uh, accomplishment for our team. Uh, we've had, we were at about 53% reduction over the last four years, which uh, that that's also an awesome number. On time performance, uh, as of January 1st last year, we were required in 2020 to to start tracking this. Uh, for MnDOT uh, guidance. And so uh, each month we have achieved a 99% uh, on time performance percentage, which uh, again, I, I, I would I would dare to guess that uh, across many fleets, that's, that's pretty uncommon. So uh, in December of 2020, we accomplished 65 days accident free, uh, which is the highest we've gone uh, in my time here with Metrobus. So 
A couple of things we're working on right now. Um, we have nine uh, small buses uh, that we're expecting uh, to be at North Central for inspection by the end of March and hopefully in, um, added into the fleet by the end of April. Um, we've got five small buses and three large buses still on hold. We're waiting for some contract approvals uh, through through the state and, and uh, a couple of other authorities. So. Uh, we did a trench drain project that we finished up uh, to to replace all of the trench drains within the garage uh, area that were old and rusted and, and uh, need, certainly needed replacing. Um, we finished the structure for the CNG compound, which covers that from you know winter snow things like that, um, extends the, the the life of of that. Uh, settled two union contracts, uh, and that certainly wasn't just the operations department. That was uh, the team and, and took a lot of work and a lot of compromise uh, during the pandemic, for sure. Uh, implemented changes to the new federal mask mandate that was uh, came into effect on February 2nd. There's been some challenges with that, but our team has certainly adapted and uh, continue to move forward on that. Uh, we have five buses that are left to receive uh, operator barriers. And so once those five are in place, our entire fleet will have uh, protective shields for our operators. We're working on some replacement staff vehicles this year. And then um, I just want to give a shout out to all the staff, um, you know, not just the operations staff, but we've got our administrative staff and our support staff that are certainly uh, uh, helpful and, and, and add to the equation for our success. So it's not just the operations department that uh, that makes things happen here. So uh, things that we're looking toward in the in the coming year, um, we're going to continue to examine the routes. As you, as you know, we um, uh, reduced our, our, our service to hourly service on most routes. And then there was a an article in the paper that uh, that wasn't exactly favorable to those changes. And so we're going to continue to, to examine those routes and, and add back as we certainly can. Um, we're going to continue to work on the implementation of new software programs. We've got a couple of software programs that were uh, in the depths of, of, of getting in place here. We're working on some improvements to our inventory tracking, improvements to our miles tracking. Uh, we're going to replace a generator and a, and a new hoist. Uh, upcoming here. Um, we're going to make some improvements to our CNG system that will improve uh, performance during the winter. Uh, we struggle during the winter months to dispense our uh, compressed natural gas, and so we're going to make some changes to that. Um, we're working with the city of St. Cloud on, uh, we were uh, uh, working with Matt over there on some CBG CB CDBG funding uh, to initiate some changes here to um, some disadvantaged areas on the east side improve some service, add some service, uh, make just make some changes so it'd be a cost neutral change uh, to the area. Um, we're making some improvements to our signage at uh, our transit center that would better serve our customers. Uh, continue to examine our fare structure and routes for improvement. And then um, last, certainly last, but certainly not least, we're continuing to examine space needs for our operations center and uh, the Western hub that we've been dis discussing. Uh, after the feasibility study. So, any questions? All right. Any uh, questions or comments from anyone? Okay. Thanks for the update. Any uh, additional uh, updates or anything, uh, Ryan? No, not at this time. This completes the agenda. All right. Um, that sounds good. Is there a motion to adjourn? Don't move, Miller. A second, anyone? Second on sticker. All right, the motion to adjourn. And Ryan, want to take the roll on adjournment? Dave Fleiss? Aye. Rick Miller? Aye. John Libert? Aye. Brian Fitzum? Aye. Kurt Hunstinger? Aye. All right, we are officially adjourned. Uh, have a good rest of your week. And Rick, it's your week. All right. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone.